Hello. Okay, so uh, let's keep uh, talking about uh, full metal jackets. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the opening scenes and uh, the main characters of part one of the film. Uh, so we'll introduce uh, Joker, uh, who is the narrator and uh, probably the most kind of, you know, relatable character. Uh, so we sort of follow him uh, through both halves of the film. Um, we also are introduced to Sergeant Hartman, uh, who is the, uh, he's in charge of the basic training of uh, the young men, turning them from civilians into soldiers. And we're introduced to uh, Leonard Lawrence, uh, who also uh, is renamed Gomer Pyle uh, by his sergeant. And we'll see how he uh, struggles to meet uh, the expectations of uh, the Marine Corps. And then uh, there's one other uh, recruit that's whose name you should uh, uh, remember, and that's a Cowboy as well. So he's a, a minor character, but he uh, plays a role in uh, both halves of the film. Uh, so it's just uh, good to keep uh, aware of that character as well. Okay, so let's uh, take a look uh, at some of the sort of important parts or characters uh, of part one of Full Metal Jacket. So uh, the very opening uh, scene of the film, uh, we're kind of immersed, almost immediately immersed in uh, this kind of uh, situation, uh, the recruits uh, of the, the young men uh, entering the Marine Corps and the process uh, by which they'll go from, you know, regular civilians into uh, Marines, uh, soldiers. Um, so that transformation. And then the opening shot is, uh, you know, man after man getting uh, shaved, uh, their hair sh or their heads shaved off uh, and losing uh, all of their hair. And I think this is, you know, an interesting opening. Uh, we have uh, kind of almost a symbolic um, representation of how uh, these young men are kind of going to lose their sense of individuality as they become uh, sort of conform to uh, this institution or the system of uh, the Marine Corps. Uh, so they're sort of saying goodbye to their old selves and uh, are going to be reintroduced or reborn as uh, a new sense of self um, as Marines. And uh, the song playing in the background, Goodbye Darling, Hello Vietnam, uh, it's, you know, this nice little country kind of ballad song, uh, but it kind of also reflects uh, this process of uh, leaving your old self behind uh, and saying hello to a new self. So hello Vietnam, uh, goodbye darling, hello Vietnam kind of talks or reflects that uh, change or transformation uh, that these men are facing. And uh, they're not, they don't seem particularly happy with the loss of their hair, um, except for uh, the one guy who has that kind of silly grin on his face. But, you know, you can imagine being uh, you know, stripped of your independence, your individuality, uh, anything that makes you who you are, at least on the surface, having that taken away from you can be kind of, you know, traumatic. Um, and then uh, all these men are sort of made to look uh, as similar as possible to one another, right? So this idea of conformity uh, will become an important part of uh, the military uh, identity. Uh, so you stop being an individual and then you become part of this uh, war machine, the military system. Uh, so that's what we get uh, in that opening shot. Uh, very sort of uh, strong visual image of uh, conformity and a loss of identity or loss of individuality. Okay, so that's uh, the opening scene. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, our main characters. Okay, so our main uh, narrator or uh, main uh, character protagonist is Private Joker. 
And uh, it's his voice who uh, sort of narrates uh, and tells us uh, where they are and uh, sort of sets the scene. Um, so he, uh, we get his perspective as sort of the major uh, character in both halves of the film. Um, he uh, is sort of known, he's labeled or renamed by Sergeant Harmon uh, as uh, Joker, Private Joker, uh, because he tends to use uh, his humor or sarcasm uh, in uh, his training. Uh, so he, it, he sometimes sort of challenges uh, his sergeant by uh, saying something uh, humorous or being kind of a smart aleck. Um, and this sense of humor will get him in trouble, uh, but it'll also sort of help him stay uh, a little bit distant uh, from that military mindset. So he uh, is kind of a character who's uh, divided uh, in his loyalty. Uh, half of him wants to be a kind of hard, uh, tough Marine. Uh, so he says he's there to kill. Um, and then the other half of him is sort of cynical or critical of the whole uh, enterprise of war. Uh, and he kind of remains a little bit detached from uh, all of the uh, sort of bravado and um, a little bit critical or, or uh, sarcastic uh, at times. Uh, making fun of uh, those who put on that tough guy front. Uh, and he uh, will, you know, be the one to make the John Wayne, uh, do the John Wayne impression uh, in that opening uh, monologue uh, when Hartman is, you know, going on his uh, spiel about uh, all the new recruits. Um, and Private Joker will bring up uh, John Wayne as a kind of, uh, reference to that, you know, overly macho uh, archetype uh, that Hartman seems to be uh, sort of playing off of. Uh, so that idea of like a super macho, tough guy image uh, that John Wayne uh, represents. Uh, so Joker uh, is sort of, he's, he's relatable because he sort of is uh, divided in his loyalty. He's not fully ingrained in the kind of military mindset. Uh, even though he's a soldier, uh, he still kind of remains a little bit cynical or critical of uh, the war and uh, the whole military system. So uh, his character will struggle most when he is forced to conform or give up uh, that part of himself that he wants to keep uh, independent or uh, he has to lose his individuality at some moments and take up that uh, military mindset. Uh, so that's where he struggles most uh, in the film. Uh, so he will face certain uh, circumstances that put him in a very sort of conflicted uh, position where he has to sort of go along with um, uh, the rest of uh, his fellow uh, soldiers uh, and sort of lose a bit of his individuality in those moments um, and compromise maybe some of his uh, ideals or his way of uh, viewing uh, the world. Uh, so that's uh, his character's struggles. We're also uh, introduced to uh, the character of Leonard Lawrence, uh, who is renamed by Sergeant Hartman as Gomer Pyle. And uh, Gomer Pyle, uh, it's, it's kind of an old reference, but it's a reference to a, like an old TV show. Uh, Gomer Pyle was a character on this TV show, uh, and he was like an, an inept uh, soldier, kind of clumsy and never did anything right. Uh, so that's the reference uh, to Gomer Pyle or where he gets his name from. And Leonard Lawrence is... Uh, he doesn't quite uh, meet the expectations of uh, military masculinity and we'll see his struggles uh, with um, this failure uh, throughout part one. Uh, but he seems to be sort of the least uh, capable uh, psychologically and physically with coping uh, and sort of achieving uh, the standards of his military training. And uh, his character 
will transform over the course of part one and we see uh, a kind of um, psychological, physical transformation, uh, particularly psychological though, transformation of his character as he's kind of broken down uh, and rebuilt uh, by this military system. And uh, pay attention to his smile. Uh, it's kind of one of the uh, symbolic elements of his character. So you'll see how his smile is also sort of transformed. It goes from being, uh, it's kind of at first seems silly or goofy, um, and it becomes attached to his uh, sort of sense that he's not in control of himself. He can't really control his smile or when he laughs. Uh, so it's a sign of his lack uh, of self-discipline or uh, just his failure to failure to meet um, uh, or to hold himself with the same kind of rigid uh, constraints as like uh, Sergeant Hartman does. And then his smile will go from silly and goofy to something a little bit more uh, sinister or uh, malevolent, evil even uh, by the end of part one. Uh, so we'll see how this young man is uh, sort of broken down by the military system and then indo indoctrinated or taught, uh, socialized uh, into a kind of violent form of masculinity uh, and the, the psychological results of being um, forced or uh, taught to participate in this system. And uh, we'll, we'll look more closely at his character as he goes on, but uh, for this opening uh, lecture, let's just uh, leave it at that. Um, so pay attention to his his character's transformation over the course of uh, part one. So lastly, we have uh, the character of Sergeant Hartman, and he uh, is sort of the one uh, who uh, teaches teaches these young men how to become Marines. So he's sort of in charge of their indoctrination or socialization whatever word you want to use uh, but he's the teacher uh, so he kind of takes on this role as a kind of patriarchal authority right he is the leader of these men and he sort of stands as kind of a, a figurehead or almost like a personification of uh, military masculinity uh, he's hard he's tough he doesn't show any sort of emotion. Uh, he's very sort of uh, violent, uh, angry. He uses uh, violence, uh, physical and verbal abuse uh, in uh, his teaching um, and, you know, establishes himself, uh, his dominance by uh, intimidating uh, the other soldiers. Uh, so they get a real sense of, you know, being afraid of this, this uh, authority figure. And, uh, you know, just the way he looks even, he's almost, you know, immaculately put together, you know, not uh, a, a hair out of place. Uh, he's got a chest full of medals and uh, just the way he walks around, you know, strutting a uh, very sort of, um, you know, that, that aura of very tough, uh, that tough exterior is sort of how he represents himself and, and the, the idea that he's like John Wayne is kind of uh, represented as well. So he becomes this kind of personification of macho, uh, soldierly toughness. Um, and he does uh, use a lot of uh, sort of derogatory language. Uh, so part of his motivation for the men uh, is to sort of break them down. Uh, he'll also rename them, uh, but he'll use words, uh, homophobic slurs, uh, misogynistic language. Uh, he'll refer to the men often as ladies, and this is a way to sort of insult them, humiliate them, because uh, it implies a kind of weakness or incompetence as men. Uh, so it's used as an insult, uh, and he'll use other sort of homophobic and racist slurs, uh, really kind of uh, as a way to belittle the men, uh, break them down so he can kind of rebuild them uh, into um, Marines, so hard and tough uh, Marines. 
Uh, so basically he wants to turn them into killers. And that's what a Marine is uh, to Sergeant Hartman and to the Marine Corps. 